welcome to the largest city on earth, Tokyo, Japan. We are standing on the busiest crosswalk in the entire world and today we're taking you to the past, present and future. Thank you, enjoy your stay. With cutting edge technology, quirky vending machines and a food trip of our dreams. With a hint of tranquility, leaving no sight unseen. This is our dream country and we're finally here. Welcome to Tokyo, Japan. First day in Tokyo, First girl, day look in at Tokyo. this. We have made it. Look at the surrounding buildings. Look at the crosswalk. This is the most famous crosswalk in the entire world. There's Mario Karts that are going by. It's going to be a whirlwind of a trip and it's starting right now. So first thing you notice anywhere in Tokyo, there are just a billion signs. Signs, screen, screens up there, sound playing, characters everywhere, there's anime, there's neon lights. It's a little bit overwhelming because you don't even know where to look. You're looking up, you're looking to the side. The energy in this city is very special. Obviously, Tokyo is known for its art, its culture. So this is Shibuya Crossing right in the center of Tokyo. This is the busiest pedestrian intersection in the entire world. So apparently there are about two and a half thousand people that cross this intersection in seven different directions every single time. We got people crossing this way, that way, every single direction. And apparently at night it just gets busier and busier. This is mad to see the amount of people crossing and it just gives you an insight to how big Tokyo is, that this is only one crosswalk. 37 million people live in this city. I think we're gonna go like up and down this crosswalk about 10 times. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because it's so much fun. It is extra special to be here on Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo, Japan, because we almost didn't make it. Unfortunately, my visa was canceled and the only way to go from where we were in Asia to next door in Tokyo, Japan, was to fly all the way home to South Africa get the visa there, fly all the way back. But even after all of that drama, it was kind of made special because we might have a little announcement. Devon and his family actually planned this entire surprise for me and it wasn't supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen here in Japan. Can we have a moment for the ring? <laughs> but it's pretty cool because now I get to come to Japan as a whole fiance. So we are in the Shibuya. Yeah, I can't say it. So we are in the Shibuya area and we're just going to walk some of these streets, see some of the restaurants, the sites, and just see what Tokyo is like on our first day. There's music everywhere, I know. every street, and you're just filled with neon signs, there's a giant Ikea. The fashion here is out of control. These vending machines are everywhere. We're gonna see what? this throughout Japan, I'm sure. And I think apparently there is a vending machine every 20 or 50 meters, and there's one machine per 23 people. So you can just tell this is the vending machine capital of the world. And That's they, mad. I know. That, one like, think for about every that. 23 people. Think about that. One vending machine for every 23 people. And it's like stuck in the wall. This is a wall. I know. This is a wall. An entire building. Look how cool Vending this machines. Is. And these aren't the actual products. You can see it's just a sticker. Well, I don't even know what, what half, what half of these things that are. That looks like a tomato. We got some Pepsi, what is Mountain this? Dew. This looks like This looks toothpaste. like some iced coffee. This looks like toothpaste. Doesn't it? We should get one. Which one should we get? This one? Okay, let's get this one. Now this is the chance to use all my coins, which if you didn't know by now, Japan has little holes in their coins. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's see what works in here. 140. So you put your coins in, you select it, and then obviously it just falls out. Super easy. Ah, so they all light up green once you've put your money in. And then, ah, there we go. Look at that, a little lemon, a little lemon drink. And then here's our change. Mission accomplished. First Mission. thing to do in Tokyo. Right, first thing, get a drink from the vending machine. Ding. 
Can I also point out something so genius? This is a recycle unit. The thing is you're not supposed to walk and eat and walk and drink. So you drink your drink and then you throw it away right here because there are no dustbins around here in Japan. Because apparently back, back, back in the day, dustbins were used as like explosive hiding places. So that's why you won't actually see dustbins around. So you're supposed to drink your drink, pop it in the recycling and then go. This is a mega city, but every single street is clean and there's no trash can. So everybody takes their own trash and recycles it at home. But as we were walking through and admiring a different side of Tokyo, we've actually come across a free Wi-Fi booth, which is like a telephone booth, but it's got free Wi-Fi. You can find little pockets of Wi-Fi in the subway, on the streets, but it's not always as safe. So we always use our VPN. That's why we wanted to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video and always keeping our online data safe, no matter where we are in the world. And if you don't know what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network that encrypts all of our information sent between our devices and the internet so no one can steal our sensitive information. And we use a VPN to always keep our online activity safe because we're always connecting to public Wi-Fi on the streets, in the hotels, cafes and airports. But it's not only about security. We also use our VPN to unlock our favorite shows online from back home that we cannot access while we're here in Asia. It's so easy to change our virtual location and get access to unlimited content libraries. If you don't already use a VPN, we highly recommend using Surfshark as they are the only VPN to offer one account for unlimited devices. Plus, if you use our code SHEVENDEV, you can get an exclusive Surfshark deal with an extra three months for free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is no risk to try it out. To get started, just click the link in the description below. Bye. Sometimes I feel like you could be overstimulated here in Japan and it's only our first day but we've got ramen shops, we've got arcades, what, what is that? Gacha balls? Is that what you call it? Gacha balls? I'm not sure, we have to investigate. This. I know and then on this side we've got souvenir shops, jewelry shops, you can get your ears pierced if you want to. It's like a sensory overload. The thing is you don't know where to look just because there are signs and every single level is a different shop. I have to go and see this shop here. What is this? What is going on in here? People are going crazy. They're toys, collectibles, yeah. figurines. Like little balls, sketchables. Isn't that what it's called? So you obviously put your money in and turn this and then a little toy, like a tiny little ball will come out. They're about 400, 300 yen and people are going crazy in there. Holy if you look moly. over here, it's an entire shop of just this. Of just catchables. Look at all of these collectibles. Whoa. This is what you get inside. They're so cute. We gotta get one. I feel like Tokyo is like a video game. I know. It's like a living, breathing video game country. <laughs> so this is an example of one of the busy streets. You can just see signs and neon lights everywhere. There's a cafe on, I think that's the third floor. All throughout the street they have speakers on all the lampposts. So there is just music playing. You kind of feel like you're in an anime scene. Shibuya is one of the liveliest areas here in Tokyo and probably the most touristy. It's peak season because the cherry blossoms are out right now, which is an incredible phenomenon called hanami, which means flower viewing in Japan. It is amazing to see how many people have loved Japan. They love the food. They love sightseeing here. And I'm very excited to do the same on our first day. Here are some more vending machines and these ones have been annihilated with stickers, which I think is really cool. But what's interesting is these in blue are cold and these are hot. So you order one of these cans and it will come out hot. A hot drink from a vending machine. That is like Japan core. <laughs> Another Japan core is claw machines galore. These look insane. Look at this shark with the giant lips. <laughs> this looks rigged. There's only one in here. In fact, there's only one in each of these. I'm less tempted this time. Like in Taiwan, I was so obsessed with claw machines, but now I figured out they're just rigged. <laughs> My favorite place in the whole of Japan. Maybe second favorite besides the actual Disneyland, but this is a Disney flagship store, which I think they have 
all over here in Tokyo. We're gonna have to go look inside, Disney everything. If you're a Disney lover like me, you get the reaction. There's more of these. We should get one. Okay, let's right here. Let's get one. Yeah, let's get one. This one looks really cool. They even have these little balls and figurines in Disney characters. This is such a big thing. Put your coins in. Whoa, <laughs> this is cool. Gosh, it's so extensive. I actually have to build the whole thing. But this is what I got in my little gatchable machine. It's a gatchable machine inside the gatchable machine. Put all the little gatchables in and I turn this little nubby. <laughs> Look, gatchableception. <laughs> 300 yen worth every penny. <laughs> Besides there being such a vibe in the city and such a hustle and bustle with the amount of people, there is just food everywhere. I read that there are 160,000 restaurants here in Tokyo alone. What? And everywhere we look, on every level, is just food and every type of cuisine you can think of. Not only Japanese, but there's Mexican food, French food, Italian, obviously American chains as well. So we need to dive into some mm. of these restaurants. I know, right now. I'm working up such an appetite right now, I'm starving. To put into perspective, the population here is four times that of New York City. Wow, that's insane. It's insane. <laughs> but because we're in Japan, we need to have Japanese food, like ramen or sushi. This gives you an idea. Every single shop on this street is a restaurant. Restaurant, 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 everywhere. And look how cool this is. This is how you order your meals. You obviously just put your coins in and then you choose what meal you want. And then you go through that door. Absolutely genius. The abundance and options is a little overwhelming that I think you just need to choose one and just go straight in because you always feel like there'll be a better restaurant just around the corner. So we're just gonna have to find one and choose it. We have just come down the street and noticed there is a standing sushi bar. So there are no seats, you stand and they make each piece of sushi right in front of you. There is even a line outside, we're gonna wait right now and then we're gonna try sushi for the first time here in Japan. This is our first time at a standing sushi bar. And look, as you can see, no chairs, and all the fresh ingredients are lined up right in front of us. They make it each and every single one by hand, and then lay it out in front of us for us to enjoy it. Arigato. We got all the options over here, and then we got a set menu on the side. <laughs> So you order each one and then as you order it, he makes it for you right in front of us. And uh, uh, I get them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go my This looks so good. We got tuna, we got salmon, we got corn. Each one was made perfectly by hand and there's a little wasabi on the inside. I can't wait to taste it. Wow. You can just taste that it's been handcrafted, made with love. And I love that they add a little bit of wasabi on the inside between the rice and the fish. This is some of the freshest sushi we have had. And the fact that each one is made individually with the freshest ingredients, it's not just raw fish, it's actually an art form. The freshness of the fish is something like I've never tasted before. As a first meal here in Tokyo, Japan, it doesn't get better than this. And that kick of wasabi is just insane. What is this? I think it's for a drink. But do you think there's a tap and then over here? It's green, green tea. tea. No way. Should we try some? Yeah. So you just push it in. No way. That's so cool. And then add your green tea. Oh my word, it's green tea powder. So we've just found that there is a tap on each and every cubicle part with some green tea and green tea powder. That's unbelievable. Oh, it's 
smells so good. It, I think it's actually matcha. That is so comforting. Arigato gozaimasu. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Wow, that was an unbelievable first experience of having standing sushi. Our sushi master was just the best ever. Every time he put a little piece of sushi down, he'd smile and wave or he'd give us a little peace sign. And he was just so cute. He made our entire experience so worth it. The sushi itself was unbelievable. It was curated and crafted to perfection. Each and every bite was just like an explosion. It was fresh, it was delicious, it was out of this world. I mean, what are first impressions of Tokyo? So behind me is a statue of Hachiko, a very, very loyal dog. And he waited for his owner at this very station every single day, even though his owner had passed away. And he actually waited for nine years after his owner had passed away, up until his death at the station. That just shows how loyal he was. So they even put a little statue of him as a little remembrance of a loyal, loyal doggo. <laughs> now this is one of the most chaotic stations I've been to. And it's just purely because of the confusion and how vast this train system is. This is just the line to get a ticket. There's all these people coming this way to go in there. there plus there's people coming down, there's people going up this escalator. We got up by the skin of our teeth just behind me at that machine. But this is the ticket and this is what it looks like. It cost us 150 yen to go one stop. So we're gonna go through this boom gate and try and make our way. But I wanna show you just how busy it is right now at midday. Where do we go? I think we go up here. This gives you an idea, the chaos. It is very well marked, <laughs> but Are you sure it's we absolutely go this way? There's people coming from all the way back there. I think we go up here. Okay. Just follow Are the people. Sure? Are you sure? This is giving you a real taste of Tokyo. It's not even peak time right now. And apparently at peak time it gets so busy that they actually have people called pushers to push people into the train to just get as many people onto a cart at a time. This is one station, here's a train, another one comes here, there's a train on the other side. I think this is our one. Is this us? Are you sure? This can be very overwhelming as a first timer. That was it! I'm so sad it was just one stop. I really enjoyed that. It's the chaos of trying to find where you're going, but once you've found it, then it is perfectly okay. I mean, we've taken metros all over the world, but this was by far the most chaotic, and it was slightly confusing, but still enjoyable. I want to point out something that's very unique with the train system here in Japan is when you look on Google Maps and you put in your station that you want to go to, it tells you which car you should sit in to get the best exit. I think that is absolutely genius. And just like everything else in Japan, we walk this way, people walk that way. There's actually signs on the ground of so, which way you should walk. And everybody is so polite. Like that's what's amazed me the most here about Japan. They're considerate, they're kind, they're friendly, and it's making me love Japan even more. With the amount of people that are here in this city, everything runs so smoothly. And of course, like you know, Japanese trains are always on time. I found the street that we're gonna go on. It's oh. right here. <laughs> this is why we came here. This is it. You can actually see that there's a little mirror what do you call that like, like a, a camera? it's kind of like a camera so you can see yourself at the entrance this is just a few of the lines here in Tokyo not even all of them this is only one company's lines I think that gives you an idea of how extensive the network is here almost every single car including the taxis are electric and here I go and you always follow the green man you never walk if it's red Everybody follows the rules here, and you should in every country. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool. They come up with everything here in Japan. You know what I love the most about Japan? It's so quiet. There's not a person inside. I think there's only about 10 people behind me. I mean, where's everybody? We have arrived at one of the most quirkiest streets in Tokyo. We've got souvenir shops, we've got jewelry, we've got a giant McDonald's. Anything that you can think of, you can buy here. There's a Daiso, there's a, another Gatchable store. A dog cafe. What? <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, he's cute. Look how crazy these shoes are. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Bigger than your head. I actually have to do this. Exuberant. Holy actually, moly. 10,000 yen. Unfortunately, there are no rock raves that I am attending anytime soon, so I'm going to have to give them a pass. This is really cool. Like, here's the street and souvenir shops, but it's completely underground. So you go maybe one or two stories underground. It's incredibly difficult not to fall in love with Japan because everything has got a hundred times cute factor. There is not a single thing in Japan that is not cute. What are these? Look at these key rings. So cute. Whoa, look at that guy. We're gonna have no money after this trip. It's, it's official. I want everything. Every single thing has to have a little character on. Everything is cute. Even this. Well, we have to. So look at this shop right here. They are lining up to have their palm read. And that is a thing here, is they really rely on the psychics and their fortunes and what a good and a bad fortune in their life is like. So they want to always find out about their fortune. This store behind me is just capsules. And we have seen them all over Tokyo today. Rows and rows and rows of capsules. Let's have a look. Let's look yeah, let's them. have a look. This is all you can get in the shop. Hundreds and hundreds of them. Tiny little, they're just little characters. These are insane. There's an entire shop of it. I have to go inside. If you are into fashion, music, art, figurines, anime, you have to come to Tokyo. You have to. I must be honest, I am not the biggest fashion icon and I'm <laughs> You're not the biggest fashion icon. I'm not, I'm not a fashion what? icon at all. I don't know enough about art, <laughs> music, but if you, you are, if you are into art, music, fashion, anime, anything comics. creative, please come here. It's just a paradise. I think the whole of Tokyo is like a Disneyland of creativity. It's like a character storybook. Everywhere you look, there's something cute, there's something glamorized, there's something covered in rhinestones. Look at this. Look at look this. This is an example. Look at all these. These are chains you can wear. Look at how this lady is dressed. I can't believe you said you're not the biggest fashion icon. <laughs> I'm just here with just my with my sunny day Well, look shirt. at this beautiful lady. She looks great. Wow, she looks amazing. She looks amazing. This is a billboard with some of the cafes that they have. Go-Go Cafe, Candy Cafe. Up here is a cat cafe. They put a cat on your cappuccino. <laughs> Have it. This is insane. This is a mini pig it? cafe. I'm not even exaggerating. They have mini pigs. Micro pigs. Let me take that back. What? Micro pigs. We're staying at a prime location here in Shinjuku in Tokyo and I can't believe it because we're on the 35th floor. That's insane. So I thought I'd give you a quick room tour. So starting off, we've got this really cool open concept bathroom. Plus we've got the safe and we've got a little rack to hang all of our stuff. Sink is very cool, very marble. I love the design. Obviously we've got separate toilet, separate shower. And what's cool is it separates with a curtain. Or if you want to have a time out from your significant other, you can just trap them in here for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Plus the shower has got a glass so you can actually enjoy the view, which I'll show you in a second, 
from the shower. Moving on, we've got a really cool desk over here. Plus, they gave us some welcome fruit. How sweet is that? We've got strawberries and apples and kiwis and grapes. Plus, a welcome card. Somehow, they found out about us getting engaged, which, if you didn't know, we're engaged. It happened. Check Instagram for more. And they gave us these cute little flowers as a little engagement present. On this side, we've got the phone. We've got the coolest mineral water I've ever seen. Look how cool this is. And our very own Marshall speaker. We've got a clock. Then in these cupboards, we've got mugs, other glasses, and a little tea station. Now, moving on, look how spacious this room is. And look at our bed. It's massive. It looks very, very soft. Should I give it a test? You have to. Oh, oh. It's like a pillow. All the lights can be accessed from our bed, which is pretty cool. So we can turn these knobbies on and off. One is a footlight. One's a footlight. Okay. Oh, I see that one. Plus, we've got robes on this side. And then we've got a seat each with a table in between. I think we're probably going to have like our morning tea, morning coffee while we look at the view. What does the view from the 35th floor look like? Wow. Feast your eyes on Tokyo City. This floor to ceiling window is just the perfect view of Tokyo City. And I can't believe how lucky we are to be staying here as like a little engage anniversary. Is this how we're going to celebrate being engaged? Because we're going to be spending a couple of days here. Plus we're going to be having dinner and we're going to be having daily breakfast. I think this is the start of our journey here in Japan. We have now broken away from the very, very busy streets of Shibuya and we've actually come across a rather pleasant, quiet suburban area of Tokyo, which shows pretty much the real local life here. And it's such an amazing difference from the hustling, bustling, touristy shopping districts like Shibuya and Shinjuku, where you can see a more laid back, quiet, less crowded environment. There's still some vending machines around like this. There's actually vending machines everywhere and a more quiet crosswalk. Have a look at this. Still, you will not see a speck of litter anywhere. Loads of electric cars. This is what I really like to see about Tokyo is that there's so many sides to this busy city. Some places more busy than others. <laughs> Over here you will see a little restaurant and you can order via machine. You don't need to talk to anyone. Tokyo could be an introvert's dream because if you order from a restaurant, you don't necessarily need to talk to a person. You can talk to a machine or even a robot. And we've seen today that there is incredible technology and you've seen how advanced Japan and especially Tokyo is. But the next place that we're about to go and show you takes technology to a whole new level. In the most heartwarming way. I can't wait for this. <laughs> We're about to experience our very first robot cafe. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome to another robot cafe. Do you have any information today? Uh, no. Okay, no problem. In Avatar Robot area, you can enjoy chatting with sweets and more with Avatar Robot Orihime. Is this good? Yes, all good. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Please move to the right side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. That was the coolest thing ever. A robot just took our order. Okay, so we've just sat down and we've ordered our drink from our very cute and friendly Orime robot. And we're sitting here at the bar while we wait for our drink. If you're thinking this is just an AI robot experience, think again. This is way Way more heartful. So these robots are actually avatars, which means they're a replacement body. So they're actually real people speaking to us from these robots. Thank you for the photo. 
they're not just ordinary people, they're people with disabilities and people who are actually bedridden, who are at home, they cannot work in person, so they work remotely. They may be even working from their hospital bed, which is unbelievable. It still gives people an opportunity to work, interact with people, practice their English, and just have a normal life, but they're in a robot body. So I think it's an amazing initiative. And the best part is because it's a normal person behind the robot, you can have a conversation so when they bring you your drink or your food, you can ask them questions and you can converse with them. I think Japan is one of the only places on the planet where you can get this experience. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Thank you. I'm a kudu. Wow, I like your hair. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm in Japan, Aomori. Oh, wow. Aomori. Oh, wow. Aomori. Aomori. Yeah, and north of Japan. Look at that. North of Japan. Oh. Here's a little map. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Arigato Arigato gozaimasu. There she goes. That was unbelievable. That was Kudu from Amory. I didn't even know where her city was, so she showed us a little map on her screen that it was in northern Japan. And now she's gone off to make her next coffee. And I think behind me, this little robot is about to make some coffee for us as well. So we're, he's doing a little coffee show. He's getting some instructions. This lady's telling him what to do. <laughs> And then you can be some coffee and order from him. Oh, wow! Give me a from him. Yes, I would love to. Thank you. Thank you. We are enjoying our time. It's been great. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? My name is Naoki. Naoki, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's your first time. Uh, drinking coffee made by a robot, right? Yes, it's our first time drinking coffee made by a robot. You're right. Please <laughs> have fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. Japan is very good. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Please take a cool picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> you look so good. <laughs> Please call me Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll call you Tom Cruise. You know, I'm more accountant than Tom Cruise. Oh, yes, I agree with that. And today, I'm with a French class to make some I wonder where the kettle is. Kettle, oh, kettle. Kettle. Oh, thank you, It was placed here. It wasn't here. Okay, kettle. I take up the kettle with my hand. And I want to start. Is this your first time talking to a robot, right? Yes. First time. Mm. Okay, and I'm taking his coffee here. Uh, French press, up the front. Okay, I take the French press with my left hand and hold the coffee beans with my left hand. So very quickly, this is what the person behind the robot is seeing. So this is an image of their screen, and that's actually the robot up there. So they can see exactly where we are, they can turn their head. It's such a unique experience to be in a normal coffee restaurant scene, that there are robots moving through the cafe, ordering coffee, delivering coffee. Okay, we've just had the ultimate robotic experience, where we actually got pretty much a personalized show of a robot making some coffee for us. He made it in a little French press machine, and we even got a little taste once he was done. He was chatting to us the entire way. We got to learn about him. He made a few jokes. He was quite the comedian. And it's quite amazing that he is operating this entire machine from home. He made us his coffee by himself and it looks like he just loves doing this. He poured it into a little cup for us. It's the first coffee we've ever had made by a robot.
We are from South Africa. South Africa, yeah, okay. Oh, so thank you for coming from far away. Yeah, very far yeah, away. Where, where are you from? Yeah. I'm from Japan. I live in Akita City. Um, oh. Akita City is north of Tokyo. That's amazing. Yeah. How, how long have you been working here? I've been working here since it's open. Uh, it's been about three years and seven months. My daughter has an illness called MHCFS and I take care of her at home. So I can't leave my home. But thanks to Arina, I can work here. My daughter has a few conditions ready for hours a day. Uh, three 165 some of the robots are really small and they just sit on the bar with us and have a chat like a normal bartender would. What's amazing about coming to this coffee shop is you can engage and make new friends where normally you would only speak to the people that you came here with. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it's candy. You got some candy? candy? Yes. Wow, candy present. You can take one. Arigato kazai. I got one for you too. Oh, thank you. Thank you, meet you. Hi. <laughs> bye bye. Would you like to take a picture with me? Yes. Let's do it. Let's take a picture. I'll stand next to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 And there she goes. <laughs> so you can see below, they're on a track and that's how they can manage their way through the cafe. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing experience. I feel like I've left with a full heart. And what I've learned is that a simple conversation can make someone so happy. It could actually make their day. And this gives them such an amazing opportunity to still have a job, still speak to people, still have a connection just through a robot. So I feel like my heart is full after that experience. We have now arrived in the heart of Asakusa, which is a different section to where we were earlier today. And it's already such a different vibe. We've got a shopping street just behind me, which is right next to the Senzoji Temple, which is what we're going to check out in a little bit. But first, I think we've got to see what all the fuss is about behind me. There's shopping street, there's souvenirs, there's food, there's snacks, there's everything, and I can't wait to go and check it out. <laughs> Wow, look at this beautiful entryway, look at this gate and then over here, this is the shopping street and we've got beautiful cherry blossoms all around, flags, there's souvenir shops, there's food, so let's go explore in there. Oh <laughs> So this is quintessentially just a shopping arcade. This entire street all the way down is just a shopper's paradise. This is the land of Hello Kitty, beautiful kimonos, sakura flowers, strawberry mochi. You can really come here and get your money's worth of snacks, of souvenirs. And this is in the old side of Tokyo. This has been here since the 17th century. And you can see how many hundreds of thousands of people have come down here. As we're walking along, we can see souvenirs of any and every kind, from masks to sandals. I mean, this is the shopping haven of Tokyo. 
this is a lip balm wall. So there is a lip balm for every single day of the year. And I've never wanted something so much in my entire life. So this is an example of one of the souvenir shops. So you can see lots of little things that you can buy here. Some bowls, all kinds of Japanese treats, some like owl figurines, some cups and mugs. So this machine behind me is pretty much like a pick a grand prize machine where you put your hand in. It costs a thousand yen per play and that means everybody's a winner. You must win something but the size of the prize is the difference. You can catch a very very, very big plushy toy or a very small one so it doesn't matter which red little piece of paper you pick you are a winner no matter what they're just putting their hand in grabbing a little paper and seeing what they want I feel like this store is everything that is Japan. I know. Look at all these tiny little key rings. Everywhere you look in Japan, there's just characters. I love it. Here's little dogs, masks. This is Mount Fuji. And obviously Hello Kitty everywhere. What a shop. I know, I love it here. You know you're in Japan when you can buy an exuberant amount of samurai swords. And they are not cheap. I mean, I'm seeing 40,000 yen all the way up to 170,000 yen. You could really uh, injure somebody with that. So right here in the middle of the shopping street, samurai swords and a few pistols. Um, is it a katana or is it a samurai sword? I know I've been saying samurai sword, but I think this is actually a katana. I is think it? since we're in Japan, it's, it has to be a katana. And I think I don't know. because it's curved, a katana is curved from okay. what I know. Well, let me know in the comments. So at the end of the shopping street is this beautiful temple known as Sensoji Temple. It's a Buddhist temple and it's the oldest temple here in Tokyo. But it's really famous because this is in fact the most visited religious site on the entire planet. I think about 30 million people visit this structure annually. So this is the main entrance gate and then on this side is a five-story high pagoda. So we're going to go into the main complex. so amazing to see people come out, they've dressed in their beautiful kimonos, they've come to pay their respects and visit one of the most beautiful sites I've ever seen. And we said there are 30 million people that come here every year and you can see it. Hundreds and thousands of people from every nation. We can hear so many different languages. And this is the main complex with the main temple in the background. Behind me is the fortune counter. You pay 100 yen. There's a whole bunch of sticks inside um, a little cylinder. You shake the sticks so you get a really, really good fortune. You take it out and then they have little drawers. So you open the drawer, you get the fortune, you read your fortune. And if it's a bad fortune, you can tie your bad fortune onto the little rack. But if it's a good fortune, then you can take it home with you. I love that. I know, that's crazy. Very cool. So to draw a fortune is actually called omikuji and they have loads of little drawers on this side. These are all the bad fortunes that people have got, probably today alone. <laughs> We're gonna try our luck at a good fortune. I have my 100 coin and I think you put it right here. Now I've got to just shake away. I don't even know how you do this. Now, how on earth am I going to figure out what this is? I have no idea. We eventually found it. Someone actually helped us say that it was 67. This is what our fortune looks like. Oh no, it's a bad one. All it says is bad fortune. Having excessive desire to climb up the ladder to clouds, your mind gets confused. I don't want to be confused. Did you get a bad one? A bad yeah. one? Yeah. You got a bad one. You tie the bad ones here. Oh. Right. Put it there and it won't happen to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're safe now. There you go. So if you tie it onto the rack, that means it won't happen to you. No, she got a bad one. Like <laughs> I got one. Like bad one too. Oh no. <laughs> okay, now it won't happen to you. <laughs> now I'm going to tie it on. Okay, here I go. That's as good as it's gonna get. Mine looks like a little bow tie. Okay, if you tie your fortune on here, that means it won't happen. So, 
You're safe. Shoot, I'm safe. It's actually amazing to find a little piece of tranquility in the hustle and bustle of the city here in Tokyo. It's not really common to find a beautiful temple like this in the middle of the city. Normally, if you want to go for traditional and culture, you go to Kyoto and you go to Osaka for all the temples. But it's actually quite amazing to visit a temple right here in the city center. Yeah.